Good day, viewers. Welcome to Robot Shop TV, our search to find the best robot vacuum in North America with the Robot Shop Ultimate Challenge is almost over. The results are in for our last challenger, the Metapo QQ2 Plus. We now go live to our Robot Shop's test area, where Vahan is reporting on the last leg of this challenge. Hello, Vahan. Hi, Julie. Now that the Ultimate Challenge tests are complete, we are interested in seeing the final results. But before we get to that, what can you tell us about how the Metapo QQ2 Plus performed in our 15 challenges? Sure thing, Julie. For test number one, time to clean a room. It cleaned it in about what we call 30 minutes. And the reason we say that is because we had to run it for the full 80, but after reviewing, reviewing the footage, it took it about half an hour to cover the entire surface fully. This is because the robot will never tell you when it's done. It'll just run for the time set. So either you have to know exactly how long it'll take based on experience or just flat out run it for the full 80 minutes and hope it does everything. Now test number two, uh, vacuuming debris, you notice here for the paper, it didn't do very good. It picked some up, but not enough to score any points. And it did about the same thing on the hardwood floor versus carpet. When you come here, you'll see coming up soon to the nuts and bolts. Uh, these were too heavy for it to pick up. And the reason being that the brush does not sit directly beneath or in line with the dustbin. So it just pushes the debris in front of the opening and expects the vacuum motor to provide enough suction to lift it up. And fortunately, these pieces are too heavy for it to pick up, so it didn't pick any up. And when it came to hair and dirt, it's lighter and easier to pick up, and it did pick some up, but unfortunately, the opening for the dustbin is not large enough, and so it easily clogged, and it stopped after a certain point, so it couldn't get any points. Overall, it got zero out of 240 points, so keep in mind, this robot is good for light dusting and light-duty cleaning, nothing too intense. Now, number three, noise level. Uh, this robot is exactly where you expect it to be for a vacuum cleaner. It's noisy as you would expect it. Nothing too loud, nothing too quiet. It gets zero points. Um, doesn't take anything good or bad away from this test. Now, number four, ability to see obstacles. It's got no way to slow down or see an obstacle before it hits it, so it got a lot of hard bumps, so it got some points taken off there. Good thing is that it won't get stuck on your curtains or your cables. So overall, after everything, it got seven points here. It did all right. It could have done better, though. Now number five, ability to climb obstacles, got a low ride height, so it only climbs the first 0.5 centimeter height. The next two after that, it can't, so it only gets five out of 35 points there. Now for number six, cliff sensors, we don't have much to say about here. They work, 10 points, let's see number seven. Now when it comes to going back to the dock, it's not as sophisticated as some of the other robots, it just kind of has to go blindly, but it does make it back there, so it'll take it a little bit longer than the other robots, but it did okay, 25 out of 35 points. Um, not an amazing score, but still pretty good. Now, when it comes to going back on the dock, if it's nudged off, you notice here, it doesn't. So there's no way for it to go back on. You're either going to have to put it back on manually or command it to dock again. Now, number nine, when it comes to seeing black carpet, this robot sees black carpet as a cliff. So it will not clean dark surfaces. It gets minus 10 points for that. And then when we come here to high pile carpet, it can clean on high pile carpet and the Brush will not stall, but it has a little bit of trouble getting around, turning, and even near walls is a bit of difficulty. So it got minus five points for that one. Now scheduling, a very strong point for this, got 50 out of 60 points. Um, interesting thing is the scheduler is on the home base, not in the robot. So it's the scheduler on the home base that starts the robot. Uh, took a li little bit longer to schedule, but it still works, so that's good. And then for the battery life, number 12, it got zero out of 40 points. It did run for over an hour and a half, which is very good, but it also took the longest to clean, so it didn't get any points for that. Now for communicating errors or states, it got eight out of 45 points, kind of low. The reason being that it doesn't really have much to display. It just has these error LEDs. So it's a little bit vague. If you're not there to see it, you won't know. And also it has no other extra communication like Bluetooth or by internet. Now number 14 for maintenance time, 30 out of 50 points. It's very easy to clean even though there was debris stuck in the brushes. Also that little brush they give you, an actual accessory with the robot is very good. It was actually useful to clean the filter. So it's one of the few robots that has a useful cleaning accessory. And then finally, the labyrinth got minus 20 out of 70, reason being it can't navigate and see the walls like a needle, doesn't follow the wall like a Roomba, and the way it turns and how it sees wall is just not enough to navigate. So overall, minus 20 out of 70, back to you, Julie. Thank you for these explanations, Vahan. See you next time for a discussion on our final results. Looking forward to it, Julie. Now let's see a Metapo QQ2 Plus scorecard.
Our tests are complete for the North American Robot Vacuum Ultimate Challenge, and the winner of this challenge is the Neato XV11 with an amazing 514 points. Stay tuned to Robot Shop TV. Next time we'll be comparing test results and help you choose the best robot vacuum for your needs. You can view more information concerning our tests and our results via the Robot Shop Ultimate Challenge webpage. See you next time on Robot Shop TV.